Right, welcome back. Last time we drilled some big holes in these tanks and we found holes in the bottom, didn't we? So let's try and figure out how we're going to fix that. Not ideal. Well, this one's a new one. So we actually got in touch with Yes Welder, who have really helped us out massively. They're a fantastic welder, plasma cutter. It's actually a seven in one machine, so should we go and check it out? So here's the fantastic machine. So it's a seven in one, so you can do AC TIG, DC TIG, plasma cuts, stick welding, and lots of more things that I'm gonna learn and figure it all out. So it comes with all, all of this, all, all the, the TIG torch. Look at that, it's beautiful. All the consumables, plasma torch. All the pipe work to go with it, your earth clamp. And as, as well, it's actually got a built-in compressor for the plasma cutter. It has. So this is going to be an awesome bit of kit for all the work that we're going to do in the future as well on Syringe and all the stuff that we need to do to Butari. Yeah. Um, we won't bore you with all the setup because we are learning. <laughs> we're learning, so we'll give you some feedback from a beginner's point of view later in a bit. But yes, Welder have also offered you guys a discount on these if you're interested unfortunately it's only available to our viewers in the us and in canada but i'll put the link in the description if you want to go and check them out right so the machine's all set up i've never ever welded like tig welded before um well we watched some youtube videos i, I watched a 10 minute youtube video so I don't know how this is going to go. Probably it's not going to be like the best welding because I'm not a welder and I don't know how to weld, but we'll give it a go. Just to lick it or something. I think that'll be good enough for our fuel tanks. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> I think I could do some practice. Yeah, but come on. No, honestly, honestly, Jam, that is really, really good. Am I a welder now? Yeah. Am I going to upload you? Right, you're past. You're past. You're past. But then we realise the machine's got. Basically an intelligent mode, you basically tell it what thickness you run and all that sort of stuff. Um, we've, we've actually dialed down 3 amps, but we found that the material is getting hotter and hotter, so you might have to invest in a foot pedal, I think, but it's, this is next level. I suppose it doesn't help as well, like the piece of wood, that piece of piece wood. Of wood. <laughs> well, you really can't well painted yeah. wood, do you? Um, it's not the cleanest, is it? So we are dealing with no. some contaminant, but hey, I'm well happy with that. Am I a welder? Right, do you reckon you can do that again? Let me have another go. The problem is it's, it's going to be hotter next to it now. So, come on, right, try again. And I'm actually better. First the worst, second the best. Right, so we've done our practice welds now. Um, sort of got the hang of it, but that was just some pretty, that was some old scrap I found in the scrap pile in the yard. So what we need to do is start preparing the actual tank and start figuring out how we're going to repair the tank because we're not making new ones. Um, it's only got holes in the bottom. So it's basically it's full of little holes. So. What we're going to do is try and locate all these holes. What me, what the end goal is, I'm going to actually fill these holes. I'm going to actually weld them up. So I'm going to, have to weld little pieces in, little, little, little discs in, I think. And then we're going to put a plate over the whole bottom of the tank. So that's now revealed little islands now where the corrosion is. So really we need to do something about that area there, don't we? And then we can have a look at this area here. Um, obviously it's having a complete plate all the way over, but I'm going to try and weld these up. And then it's like double protection. That's, that's what I've got in my head anyway, so. There you go, 
straight through. So I'm not sure if this is going to work because obviously I'm not a professional TIG welder but hey, let's give it a go <laughs> Basically no Doesn't look that bad after it's been ground off. There's a little divot there, but I think that's where the um, where the crap was coming out of it. Right, so welded up all the little holes now. So I went around with a screwdriver, drilled them all out, ended up welding them up, just sort of building up the holes. Um, initially, I did try and put a plate on the inside and then weld up. That was just a nightmare, and I was getting loads of contamination. Uh, right, so I, I think it's pretty. I'm going to say water tight now, diesel tight now. So what we need to do now is look into, or we need to make our big plate now for the top, don't we? It's a big plate, stick the plate on it, we'll go around, figure out where it's going to be welded, and then we'll clean up all the edges, then we'll get that on, then we'll get it welded on. traumatic on the saw just getting splattered with bits of alley but right so the new the new bottom fits beautifully so we'll mark it out a bit now we'll, we'll, we'll clean it all up get rid of all the all the snags off the alley then we'll get rid of the paint and um, we'll see about welding and go up so what i'm doing here is like a lot of weld or the original weld on the sides here um just flattening it off a bit so when my sheet comes in i've got a, a nice Nice surface to weld to then, and there's all these little divots which could hold contamination. Right, so we've got the new sheet on it in place now, everything's been cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. Perfectly aligned, so we're going to start putting a few tacks on it, so we're going to put some tacks all the way around it. Um, and then we go for like the full weld up, so I'm going to put some nice little small tacks, so when we come on with the big weld it won't be in the way, it doesn't vary. The only thing I've just noticed though, I might be running too much gas. So my bottle's looking very empty. Um, so I don't know how far this bottle's going to go. Even there's a brand new bottle of basically a day ago. Um, so I'll have to see how we get on with that. Maybe I need to get like a flow a flow meter on the bottle. But right, I'm going to tap, tap this up now and then we'll see how we go. So it's been a few days since, since I was last here, I actually ran out of gas, so we eventually got some more gas so we can now proceed with the welding. So it turns out I was using far too much gas. Uh, I've now got one of them little flow metery things. So I've now rigged it up here. I've had to like run this regulator through here into the into the flow meter. So I've now got it set, I think it's about 12 and a half litres a minute or something daft like that. Um, right, ready to weld. Finish welding the tank. So my welding's a bit ugly, but I've not welded Ali for oh, well forever. Um, I think there's been quite a bit of contamination in this tank because obviously this tank's been swimming in diesel on it for the past 30 odd years. So that's that's my excuse anyway. So, but I'm pretty 
I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's um, diesel tyre now, so what I think we should do before we weld the, the tops up is fill it with some water, maybe leave it overnight, just to make sure there's no drips. It's not be devastating, wouldn't it? You put all this back in the boat and you find out there's leaks, so may as well test them now. Right, so we've got both tanks set up now on the floor. I've, I've got them on like chocks underneath, so water could come out if it wanted to. Right, we've got to fill them up with water now. I'll probably leave them overnight. Um, the floor's dry all around them at the moment. Uh, a little bit by the front door there, a bit wet there, but it doesn't normally come in any further than that. Right, so let's let's fill them up. Three quarters full. It's going to be awkward to get the water on it. We could press test them, but take a lot of plugging of the holes and all the fuel. Oh, I haven't got all the plugs for it, so we'll just do a water test. There's quite a lot of pressure in it. It's simulating diesel. Right, let's fill it with water. So they've been filling now for some time. So if you can see the water level there. It's probably about there-ish on the tank, so just over three quarters full. We'll give that another two minutes and then we'll leave that to um, sit overnight. Right, so about half full now on the on the welded tank, on the one I welded it, and up to now it's dry. So that's a good sign, and so obviously we'll keep filling it, maximum pressure. Um, I don't think we'll ever have that much fuel in it, I think we could afford it. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. So while they're doing the water test, we need some plates that we can make removable, don't we? So we've got about 20mm up either side, so we want them about 170 maybe? So if we make some discs at 170, so we've got plenty of spare aluminium. So what I've made is is a template here. Now this, I've made this at 180. Because what we're going to do is we're going to cut them out with a plasma cutter. So but this TIG welder we've got has actually got an inbuilt plasma cutter. And it's got its own compressor in it. So like, normally with a plasma cutter you need like a, a big air compressor to support it. But this one has actually got its own inbuilt compressor, so you can do plasma cutting. So should we see if that works any good? So on the machine there's basically a button there, you've got AC TIG, DC TIG, stick welding, cuts, and cuts, what does it say, cut, cut smooth or something? So I think that, no that, yeah okay, that, that's shown for an external compressor. This will be internal compressor. So 45 rounds, let's try that. So should we do a little test piece first? So I've set up a test piece, not even tried it yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my piece of wood which is basically going to be the same as that. So I'm going to see if my me, if me distance is okay. So I'm going to run it along there. And then we can set the amps and all that sort of stuff, can't we? So. Do you like my cool eye protection? We got these from Suzuki from the um, the Southampton boat show. So the plates all come out quite nice. Give them a quick clean up with the grinder. Right, so we need to patch this now. So we basically want them over there, but we want these removable. So what my idea is, if we if we drill these, figure out how many holes to put in them, then we put the corresponding holes into the tank, then we put a stainless bolt, so we've got to tap the tank, so we're going to put a stainless bolt up through with a washer on it, then we can uh, thread lock them in, so they'll be nice and, nice and sealed. And then we'll make a big gasket that goes over it all, and then we can then put the plate on it. Then we can then put some nuts then, nuts and washers going down over the top of the plate. Let's keep it all nice and sealed. That's the plan. So we'll do all that before we weld the other ones on, because then we can give it, because we've got to create a swarf in the tanks, then we can give it a hoover out. Um, and then, yeah, then we can then weld them on, because there won't be that much dirt, if any, when we're welding, so. Right, let's figure this out. So I've come up with a plan. So the piece of wood that we cut out of our template to to make the um, these discs when, when we were plasma cutting them, 
Um, if I basically, I can make myself like a drilling jig, so then we can get them all basically the same. So if we reduce this now down to the, down to the same size as these, which are 172 millimeters they've turned out. So we'll do that, and then I think there's like an indexing thing on, on this, so then we can actually get them evenly spaced holes. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. So it's mounted in the lathe now, big M10 all the way through, nice and solid. Um, at the moment we're at like one, 177, so it's like a few mil off it. Turn it on. About 172 now, that's good. So in the back of the lathe, there's a load of dots there and then you can put this pin in it. So I think we can use that to precisely mark out where each one going, because it'd be nice to make all the caps the same, wouldn't it? It doesn't really matter if they're not, but if we, if, we, if we can get them all the same, then one can go on either or. And it's good practice for using tools, isn't it? So I've got it locked on one known one now. So if I put a line there across the, um, the thingy, and I'll rotate it. Okay, that's all divided up quite nice. So what we need to do now is put a line. So we only need to go 10 mil to the edge. I don't know, I'm kind of making this up. But about there. So now in theory, if I line this up now, pop a clamp on it. place now there all we need to do is drill the holes um what we're struggling to do is keep pin this down while we drill all of the holes so obviously you drill one it could move couldn't it then it could move then you'd be we misalignment but i've had an idea so basically we've got a screw in the end of a piece of wood so it's left-handed heavy pull that on the end there two screws there and then we put a clamp down there. Then you can clamp it, then it holds it down and it's nice and snug, can't move anywhere. So now we have to put some threads in it. Camera lady, woo! Say hello, camera lady. No, hello. <laughs> Guess who it is? Anyway, right. What we've just realised, I realised actually, even though Gemma's here, is that we're just about to weld these plates on, and then we thought we're going to be fitting a diesel heater. It did originally have a diesel heater. I'm not sure where it takes its fuel from, but I want its own independent fuel system. So, going to be putting one of them in. Um, don't come out the side, but that's going to go through that hole there into the side and pick up from you know, the corner of the tank. So, quick update before we um, weld it all up and clean it. So, obviously, the fuel part of this is designed for a much or bigger tank. I don't know if you get a bigger tank than these, but. Um, 
Obviously we don't want to take right from the bottom, encourage loads of crap, and also we don't want to empty our tank. So if we leave our heat on for some daft reason, so what do you reckon about there, Gem? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't run it dry. It's not good news, unfortunately, we've got a very small leak. One tiny little pesky little beansy weensy little drip. I don't know if you can see it there. So I put a mark there. So what we need to do now is we need to drain all the water out. So the way we're going to get the water out, we've got a big hose, a big fuel transfer pump and a, a big filter. So I've made this so we can clean the diesel. Uh, I've taken the filter out at the moment because all we're doing is pumping water and we want it to go, we want it to go fast, don't we? So. And we can also use this for pumping the fuel back into the tank. Because obviously there's quite a lot of juice in there. For washing boats. Right, so I fixed all the leaks now. Um, it's been sat here for like, I don't know, good sort of three, four hours. There's no, there's no water at all underneath now, so. So the tanks now are all welded up. We've done all the drilling out for the hatches. All the other ones are fully welded and they are ready for paint. But before we paint them, we want to test that the welds are watertight so we put them on the sides we're filling it up now we're going to fill the tanks up to there and make sure these don't leak so there we go the tanks have been sat there for a few hours now filled with water obviously not full because there's big holes like up to there uh they're not leaking so the welds aren't the prettiest but the watertight so that's the main thing so now we can get on to sanding them and getting them painted painting the tanks so we're going to use raptor paint because we loved it on the boat and it's held up really well it's such a durable paint it's um resistant to fuel spills chemical spills salt water and fresh water so it's really the perfect paint to use on the fuel tanks the only thing is we don't want the rough finish of the raptor where our gaskets are going to lay for our hatches so we're going to put some primer on it first this is a anti-corrosive epoxy primer we want a good base on these alley tanks to ensure a good seal a good stick with the raptor paint so this is what raptor recommend that we use first oh wait keep shaking now get all the two parts mixed together two minutes two minutes oh, that's boring that's about as long as you last yep we keep shaking for one and a half minutes <laughs> Another 30 seconds. I feel like a proper graffiti artist. Uh. Quite a nice colour actually. Yeah. Will I pay my next boat that colour? <laughs> You're not having another boat. <laughs> so we'll give that two coats, but literally you just five minutes in between coats. So that's quite easy, isn't it?
I think I might be better suited to do that. <laughs> So, I've not used Raptor paper before because Simon done it on the boat when we did it. So, these tanks are mine. Well, Mrs. Rabbit, aren't you? All those jobs you do. <laughs> I'm a painter. I'm a welder. Don't lie down. I can't, I can't stand it up. Just take, take the airline off it. The thing is, you don't have to be qualified in stuff to have a go at it. Might not be perfect, like professionals, but it's cheaper than paying someone else to do it, isn't it? Mm. As well, by learning all these different jobs and whatever, imagine how much it would actually cost you to go to school, to go to a college to learn how to do it. I mean, the best way sometimes it costs you some materials, doesn't it? The best way to learn something is just to do it. By error. That's how we learn, by error. I am going to start at the bottom though, because if I do mess it up, no one's going to see it. just got to put the plates back on when the paint's dry and get them back over to the boat so come back next time to see us get them back into the boat where they belong and um, on a side note when you are painting with Raptor I would highly recommend using gloves because I'm stuck like this forever now but oh well is what it is see you all next time